This is one of the best commercial kitchens in New Mexico. We prepare more than 8,000 meals a month, and all of it done by volunteers. You know Kitchen Angels, and you know what we do. Kitchen Angels. Most of our clients have serious health issues. So what could make you or me a little sick to the stomach might send one of them to the hospital, or worse. I'm Joe Cates. I am the Director of Food Services here at Kitchen Angels. And today we are going to talk about food safety and sanitation in the kitchen. Your mother told you to do it, and we're telling you to do it. When you enter the food prep area, whether from outside or just down the hall, wash your hands thoroughly. What's thoroughly? As you wash, count backwards from 20. That'll give you an idea. Before you start, put on a clean apron. And yes, a hairnet. Some volunteers prefer hats. If you wear a hat, it must cover all of your hair. No ponytails. A clean towel goes in your apron string. Lastly, gloves. Gloves are so important, you might find yourself changing them three to four times a shift. It's okay, we have a lot. Foodborne illness, usually called food poisoning, is caused by one of two things, cross-contamination or food spoilage. Food spoilage is either caused by food that has gone out of date or food that has been kept out of the safety zone. The safety zone is from negative 10 to 41 degrees Fahrenheit. Just think of your refrigerator at home. Can, bottled and wrapped, they're all right there. And they're all at your Between your refrigerator and freezer, food is kept in the safety zone. It's the same idea at Kitchen Angels, just bigger. Here, we have walk-in and reach-in refrigerators and freezers. We also have a blast chiller. It can take food from 200 degrees to zero degrees in 90 minutes. We use it to freeze our extra meals for frozen meal delivery. As for cross-contamination, it can happen when you go from working with one food to another. Say if you're cutting chicken, and then you start cutting fruit. Without cleaning up your workstation, your knives, your cutting boards, your gloves, and cleaning and sanitizing your entire workstation. Cutting boards and utensils are carried over to the washing station. To sanitize your workstation, we provide a solution of an ammonia-based sanitizer. It's harmless to you, but it wipes out germs. You'll also need to change your gloves every time you begin working with a different food. Cross-contamination is also caused by touching your hair, touching your face, or touching anything you weren't directly working with. To further prevent cross-contamination, cutting boards are color-coded. Yellow is for poultry. Red is for red meat. Green for fruits and vegetables. And blue for all food that has already been cooked. Always use the correct color cutting board for the work that you're doing. It's also important that foods be cooked to the proper temperature. Fish should always be cooked to 145 degrees. Beef, pork, and lamb should also be cooked to 145 degrees, unless it is ground. And then you should cook it to 160 degrees. Poultry should always be cooked to 165 degrees. Once you have cooked the food to the proper temperature, it can be held above 140 degrees for up to four hours. After that, you either need to freeze it or throw it out. Now I want to talk about leftovers and the proper way to store them. 
All leftovers should be put in proper containers or Ziploc bags. And very importantly, with the day's date. Leftovers go into the refrigerators or freezers in a process that we call FIFO. First in, first out. So that way, the oldest things get used first and the newest things get put in the bag. On the very top shelf, you will have your cooked foods, raw vegetables and fruit. The next shelf down, you should have your fish. The next shelf after that, we should have beef, pork and lamb. And on the very bottom shelf is where you store poultry. Never, ever put anything on the floor. Now I know this is a lot to take in, but as you work in the kitchen, it will become second nature to you. Rest assured, you will not be thrown into the deep end of the pool. New volunteers will usually start with something simple. Chopping fruit or vegetables, something like that. As we get to know you, and you get to know the kitchen, you'll advance to more complex things. If you do have a question, don't just guess. Please ask me, not just the person standing next to you. Unless I'm the person standing next to you.